Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kevin Slavin, President and CEO of St. Joseph's Health. I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, it's a privilege for us to host this virtually in the great city of Patterson uh, and to kick off this vitally important initiative, Community of Caring, the Patterson Doula Cooperative, which we all know aims to expand doula services in Patterson while at the same time creating opportunities in maternal care. We all know that doulas provide critical support to new parents that are valued members of the healthcare team. So St. Joseph's is proud to be a part of this innovative collaboration with New Destiny Family Success Centers and the Partnership for Maternal Child Health of Northern New Jersey. And we all know it's very fitting that our special guest, the First Lady of New Jersey, Tammy Murphy, will begin today's program. First Lady Murphy has been a tireless advocate during her tenure, working to break down barriers to quality care and end health disparities in maternal care. Nurture New Jersey Maternal and Infant Healthcare Strategic Plan under her leadership outlines concrete action plans that help healthcare providers, health systems, and community organ organizations identify steps they can take to ensure that each mother and baby thrive. So it's now my great honor to introduce the hardest working first lady in the history of New Jersey, Tammy Murphy. Well, uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I wanna thank uh, President and CEO of St. Joe's Health, Kevin Slavin, for that really kind introduction, as well as for your leadership and commitment to the health of New Jersey's mothers and babies. Um, I also wanna recognize um, the great Mayor Andre Thea, who will be speaking later, and the Partnership for Maternal and Child Health of Northern New Jersey for the invitation to be here today. Uh, I am grateful and honored to join all of you in celebrating the kickoff of the Patterson Doula Cooperative. Uh, we are just two days away from Maternal Health Awareness Day. And as we work to solve New Jersey's maternal health crisis, there is no question that doulas are an essential part of our strategy. Um, as you know, I founded Nurture NJ on Maternal Health Awareness Day uh, just two years ago with the goal of, actually three years ago, wow, 2019, um, with the goal of making New Jersey the safest and most equitable place in the nation to deliver and raise a baby. Um, over these past years, I have learned so much about the complex problems we face, as well as the far-reaching, in-depth approach we need to take in order to reach our goal as evidenced by the breadth of the Nurture NJ Maternal Health Strategic Plan. In, in all that I've learned, and I have said this before, uh, if I were to go back and do anything differently regarding the labor and delivery of my own four children, it would be to have included a doula. The role a doula plays throughout a mother's pregnancy, labor and delivery, and postpartum period is unique and essential. A doula not only advocates for you, um, a doula also serves as a sounding board, advice giver, and support system at an incredibly vulnerable time for any mom. In fact, uh, my awesome chief of staff, Stephanie Lagos, delivered her daughter on Tuesday with the help of a doula. Um, I asked her if she might allow me to share her experience with all of you, and this is what she had to say in her own words. Absolutely, our doula was wonderful. That's in all caps. Uh, she was the only care provider who came into our home before the baby and worked with me and Justin in our space on what we should expect and wanted for the labor. She came twice and stayed one to two hours each time. Then there was the encouragement through the whole process and assurance of what I was doing was right, or at least right for me. She stayed with us at the hospital the whole time. One of my favorite things was her reminding me and Justin when I had time to make decisions. After a medical question from the nurse, she'd always say, do you want a moment to think that over? So uh, that is uh, directly from the horse's mouth. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, it's hot off the press. Um, that's an account of the tremendous value that doulas bring to the table. Um, our administration understands the necessity of this kind of support and understanding that is reflected in our work to grow our community doula workforce over the past four years. In 2018, we launched uh, community doula pilot programs across the state. 
In 2019, we became the third state in the nation to provide Medicaid coverage for doula care. And the following year in building our reimbursement infrastructure, we were adamant that community doulas be part of the process to ensure our infrastructure is doula informed. That same year, we also launched a doula learning collaborative to help continue to expand our doula workforce. And I am thrilled that because of the support of the Burke Foundation, the Henry and Marilyn Taub Foundation and the Terrell Fund, the partnership will be offering free doula training, ensuring that our community doula workforce will continue to thrive. Uh, I am incredibly proud of the steps we have taken thus far, but as we work to fully transform New Jersey's maternal health landscape, we understand that sweeping change requires persistence and unfailing dedication. At the same time, we know that the urgency of this crisis remains and that its root cause is institutional racism, plain and simple. Black women in New Jersey are over seven times more likely than white women to die due to maternity related complications. And black babies are over three times more likely than white babies to die before his or her first birthday. As a mother of four incredible children, this terrible knowledge uh, weighs heavily on my heart, especially because I know, but for the color of my skin, that could have been me. And that kind of personal commitment and motivation is reflected in every Nurture NJ partner. We are not seeking simply to improve our maternal health statistics or data. We are working to make sure that every New Jersey mom and baby gets off to a healthy start and is put on a trajectory toward a full and healthy life. Over the past, past four years, we have taken a comprehensive and meticulous approach to understanding the scope of this crisis. We've made significant and often groundbreaking policy changes, and we've enlisted national experts to help us design our Nurture NJ Maternal Infant Health Strategic Plan. And on top of that, we've begun to implement many of its recommendations. Uh, some of our most significant accomplishments since the start of the Murphy administration include establishing the most robust in the nation statewide universal newborn home visitation program, truly groundbreaking, um, thus becoming the second state to expand Medicaid coverage to 365 days postpartum and leading the nation as the third state to provide Medicaid reimbursement for doula care. But the list goes on. Uh, in January of 2021, we released the Nurture NJ Strategic Plan, which is the culmination of over a year of innumerable conversations with hundreds of relevant and invested entities, ranging from departments and agencies, health systems, physicians, doulas, community organizations, and most importantly, of course, mothers and their families. Uh, designed to make transformational change in a system that has historically failed our mothers and babies of color. This plan is our blueprint to make New Jersey the safest and most equitable state in the nation to deliver and raise a baby. At its most fundamental level, the plan meets the specific needs of women in their local communities, where they live, work, worship, play, and love. The recommendations range from increasing prenatal care and support for women of color to creating a groundbreaking maternal health research and innovation center so that our work can continue to grow, evolve, and inform itself. And most importantly, it makes broad reforms aimed at dismantling the structures that for generations have prevented women of color from living in environments that provide the resources needed to simply be healthy. The goal, to reduce our maternal mortality rate by 50% over five years and eliminate the racial disparities in birth outcomes requires all sectors, health, education, business, government, academia, and more to play an integral role. And ultimately, the success of our plan relies on the active partnership and collaboration of all of us. Since the start of the administration, we have held quarterly Nurture NJ interdepartmental maternal and infant health work group, work group meetings with over 18 different departments. We've held six family festivals to bring together state, 
county and local resources to over 5,500 families in our cities with the highest rates of black maternal and infant mortality, which was accomplished in large part due to our partnerships on the ground with community organizations, faith leaders, school districts, elected officials, hospital systems, and more. And true to name, the partnership was a crucial partner in building out our most successful festival to date in Jersey City in 2020. But our first one was in Patterson, I have to add. <laughs> um, most recently, we held our fourth annual Black Maternal and Infant Health Leadership Summit, where over 350 participants, including doulas, nonprofits, activists, state departments and agencies, and again, most importantly, moms, uh, came together to discuss and identify solutions to our maternal and infant health crisis. I am personally proud that because of our work to dismantle silos, build trust among our over 1,000 Nurture NJ partners, and amplify the voices of the mothers affected by this crisis, we have been able to hit the ground running. Uh, to date, my husband, Governor Murphy, has signed 39 maternal health-related pieces of legislation, from establishing a perinatal episode of care to codifying a women's right to reproductive autonomy, we have made small and big changes with a major impact. One year from its release, we have already completed or made headway on over half of the more than 70 recommendations outlined in the strategic plan, ranging from establishing a an, an, uh, maternal and infant health research and innovation center to expanding coverage for reproductive health for our, our undocumented mothers, and several of the achievements um, I already shared with you. With our collective and persistent commitment, we will root out the institutional racism that has affected every corner of our society, all the way to our mothers and babies. So I thank everyone here today for joining us in this mission. Um, the Partnership of Maternal and Child Health of Northern New Jersey, has been an incredible partner to work with these past few years. And I genuinely look forward to what I am certain will be a fruitful panel discussion. Uh, together, we will make New Jersey the safest and most equitable place in the nation to deliver and raise a baby. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much, First Lady. It's great to see you and awesome to hear about all the progress that's being made uh, on this front. Uh, I have the pleasure of introducing uh, my mayor, Andre Saya. I've had the privilege of partnering um, with Mayor Saya and First Lady Rahana Saya for many years around the concerns that affect uh, young families, infants and toddlers. And because they are also parents of three beautiful children, they understand uh, many of the challenges um, that um, expectant mothers face and some of the risks and concerns for our young babies. So I know I speak confidently on behalf of Mayor Saya when I say he is a true champion for our children and expectant moms, and he believes in the importance of removing the disparities in health outcomes in the city of Patterson. And so we say thank you to Mayor Saya for uh, opening the way for these types of innovative partnerships to take place. And it's a pleasure to have you as uh, a champion on our behalf. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. The pleasure is mine because I want to thank you for your leadership, our partnership, and most importantly, our friendship. That goes a long way and matters more than anything else to Farhana and me. And Patterson, by having this collaboration, this innovative collaboration, is committed to becoming a city of solutions. We have longstanding challenges. And if it weren't for partners like the Tao Foundation, who's always supported our city, where would we be? And Marie Kinsilla, who's been with me for quite some time back in the days when I was the executive director of the Patterson Alliance, and we were looking to build our organization. But this announcement comes on the heels of Another important announcement that Patterson received, Bloomberg Philanthropies issued a global mayor's challenge, and they said whomever wins would get a million dollars to implement that idea. 631 cities from around the world applied, and they chose 15. Patterson is one of 15 cities 
in the world and one of three cities in the country that won the Bloomberg Philanthropies Global Mayor's Challenge. And that is to address the opioid epidemic in our city. And so having doulas who could provide support, guidance, compassion, that certainly speaks to the level of care that is in this community. And it's because of pastor, people like Pastor McCombs and also want to salute and commend another champion for children, First Lady Tammy Murphy, and another partner that we've had in progress, a partner in progress, Kevin Slavin, because our vaccination rate is as close to 100% as it can get amongst 18 and older. And we have to focus on our children and getting people the boosters. Because in Patterson, it's all about saving lives. So I am proud to be a partner in progress during this pandemic in this once in a century crisis where everything has become amplified and situations seem worse than ever. And that's why they need all of us to collaborate and prove that we are a city of solutions. Thank you and congratulations. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Liliana Pinete, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer at the Partnership for Mater and Child Health of Northern New Jersey. I would like to welcome you to our kickoff event to announce this new initiative that together we have named Community of Caring, the Patterson Dula Cooperative. This program is a collaboration between New Destiny Family Success Center, St. Joseph Health, along with the Partnership for Mater and Child Health of Northern New Jersey. I'm thrilled that um, Mr. Slaven, President and CEO of St. Joseph Health, Caroline McCombs, Executive Director of uh, the New Destiny Family Success Center, along with the First Lady Murphy and the Mayor of Patterson, join us today to express their enthusiasm. Thank you so much. I want to um, talk a little bit about the community uh, of caring, our Patterson uh, Doula uh, project. It's a compre comprehensive initiative and the objectives of these programs are to address the maternal health disparities that exist in Patterson by increasing access to community doula care so birthing individuals can have healthier pregnancy and optimal birth outcomes to raise awareness and educate Patterson residents about community doulas to build the perinatal workforce through doula training and to develop and implement professional education for perinatal clinical staff on hospital policies regarding the role of doulas in promoting physiological birth. During this kickoff event, we'll have three panels that will discuss the important components of the Peter Patterson doula project. The first panel, which I will moderate, will center conversation around the importance of this program and discuss the supportive efforts of the project partners and funders to expand doula services in Patterson and surrounding areas. For our first panel, I am pleased to be joined by Evan Delgado, Vice President of Programs from Turrell Fund. Welcome, Evan. Ro uh, Dr. Roger Kears, a chief of OBGYN at St. Joseph University Hospital. Welcome. Melissa Litwin, director, program director for early childhood, the Henry and uh, Marilyn Top Foundation. Welcome, Melinda. Uh, Melissa. Caroline McCombs, executive director, New Destiny Family Success Center. Renee Nogales, senior program officer for the Burke Foundation. Welcome. And Marie Carr, Viserys Talti, President and CEO of, of our organization, the Partnership. Welcome, Marika. So I'm going to start with a few questions um, that I'm going to address first to our funders. So um, my first question is, why was funding a community doula project um, important? And how was it in line with the mission of your foundation? So um, I don't know, I will start with Evan. Happy to jump in and thank you for having me. Um, you know, I think this was this was an easy choice uh, for me and for the Terrell Fund. I remember Children's Home Society pulled me aside for a meal and started talking to me about the importance of doulas. And I said, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm bought it. <laughs> I'm already sold. What can we do? 
Um, at the Troll Fund, we understand that doulas meet the emotional and physical needs of expected mothers. They provide strong, compassionate support. You've heard from other people on the call already just how important they are. And we also see this as an important piece of a larger puzzle. How do we create transformative change in a system that has historically failed mothers and babies, especially mothers and babies of color? Uh, we believe it's our shared responsibility in order to make these changes. So we are exceptionally proud to support community and care. Uh, it aligns with our mission of supporting children, parents, caregivers, and families, and creating systems change alongside our partners. Thank you so much. Lisa, would you like to share with us how this project is in line with the mission of your foundation? Thanks so much for asking. So the Taub's um, mission with regards to early childhood actually focuses on third graders reading at grade level. Um, that's an important goal because all school success depends on literacy, but it's also a, mess, a measure of everything that has come before uh, and impacted that child to date the adversities and the protective factors that they've experienced. Um, and over the years, we have learned that for a child, success starts way before reading instruction. And that insight has led us to focus on equity and to name structural racism wherever we see it. And that issue begins at the, at the very beginning of a child's life. And so hence, we are looking for ways to partner with the state and city to support positive birth outcomes and doulas comes naturally from there. Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, Rene, would you um, tell us, um, you know, why you decide to partner as funders for this project? Because this is unique. Actually, we um, were able to receive funding from three foundations that decide to collaborate. Can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely, Liliana. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm so honored to be here today. Um, so Burke partners with nonprofits to identify, rigorously evaluate, and help scale programs that foster the healthy development of children and families in New Jersey. And our sweet spot is the earliest years, prenatal to three. And a little over four years ago, the foundation conducted a landscaping scan, talked to dozens of folks to find out which programs would have the greatest impact. And that scan actually led us to focus on the earliest years and doulas was one of the several strategies that caught our, our attention. And thank you, Evan, you were at Burke at the time before I joined and did a lot of those interviews. So we were really inspired by the benefits of doulas. Um, you know, as you all know, not only do they have clinical outcomes, um, but also the fact that they help birthing individuals, notably from those from communities of color, have positive birth experiences, which is critical for helping improve birth equity and supporting First Lady Tammy Murphy's vision through Nurture New Jersey. And so we embarked on a planning and discovery phase that looked at different doula programs along with Children's Home Society in Trenton. And the group learned about a community-based doula program developed by Health Connect One. They are a national leader in providing equitable community-based perinatal peer-to-peer -peer support. And we were really impressed um, with their track record that they really focus on um, their program being community led and that Health Connect is really committed to economic justice by valuing the work of doulas with salary and supervision and support. And so we began funding over three years ago what is currently the only community doula program in New Jersey that focuses on Spanish speaking women, Amar Community Doulas, which is implemented by Children's Home Society. And I'm so glad that you'll hear from them directly a little bit later today. Thank you so much. Um, I'm wondering uh, what is the impact that you hope this project will have in the Patterson community? Anyone, uh, Evan or Melissa or Rene? Happy to jump in. Um, you know, I think what we're really hoping for is that it will address maternal disparities in Patterson uh, by increasing access to this critical service. Uh, there's there's too many people I want to name and call out on this call for you know whose work this aligns with. It's it's everyone, and I sense such expertise and passion for the work and for Patterson on this call. Um, but every birthing individual deserves to have a healthy pregnancy and birth. Uh, everyone deserves access to high quality perinatal services um, and deserve to have their emotional and physical needs met. So 
that's what we're hoping for is that people will get helped day by day, the work will grow, uh, and we're really hoping for a whole different system, a whole different New Jersey one day around these issues. And I think it starts here. I hope um, we, we, we uh, arrive to those great outputs. Uh, yes, Melissa, please. I, I want to add to that, that St. Joseph's uh, Hospital recently conducted a study and learned that birthing people want to be heard and central in their own birth experience. Uh, and they said that sometimes it feels like the baby is the patient and they are uh, not central to the process. And doulas are a way to shift that balance, helping uh, those giving birth to feel powerful and in control, able to say what they need. A doula is an ally. What should we do together? Um, it's a life and death issue for some, uh, but it's important for all. Uh, chemically speaking, the mom's emotional state is the baby's entire environment. Right, So we um, want to be part of this amazing opportunity for Patterson to lead the way in the state to create uh, a system of doulas for all. Thank you so much. Renee, do you want to add? Yeah, I mean, the, the, on, the one thing I'll add from earlier is that, you know, we were just so impressed with the maternal needs assessment that you all worked on. Um, you really went deep on the ground through learning conversations and really identified doulas. Um, and, you know, through our work in Trenton and the success that we've seen, we, we just wanted to jump in and be a part of it. And we're really thrilled to do that. And I think my hope um, is that it's similar to what Evan and Melissa have said, but it's, it's really that everyone from Patterson who gets to team up with a community doula will have the healthiest and most satisfying birth experience possible. And that the collaborative that is just getting started will be thriving 50 years from now. Um, and we'll have the capacity to make a community doula available to any family who wants one. Thank you so much. Uh, what is unique about this initiative is the partnership. And um, uh, we started a few months ago with a team from uh, the Partnership for Mater and Child Health, but with uh, collaboration with New Destiny, us and St. Joseph. So I would like to ask our um, representatives in the panel from the partners to describe um, your role and commitment uh, with this project. Can we start with Carolyn? Thank you. Um, this is just near and dear to my heart for so many reasons, um, but we've had the privilege of partnering with the partnership um, the past three years um, being on the ground, meeting with moms in the community um, and knowing firsthand what the real challenges are, what the needs are. And um, while we, we were very privileged to be able to partner with moms and, and help to guide them through many of the issues um, that they were experiencing, and they ran the gamut from social, emotional to physical needs. Um, but we, you know, we're limited in the sense that, you know, we've got one, you know, community health worker serving, you know, uh, many, as many as 30 or 40 moms. And now with this opportunity to have doulas, it takes what we are doing and multiplies it um, to a level of support that we couldn't begin to touch. And so for that reason, um, this is probably one of the best economic spends um, that could be made in taxpayer money. And I'm excited that the vision is there, the will is there, the partnership is there to get it done. Thank you so much. Dr. Kears, would you like to go next? Yeah, so <clears throat> we started Centering Pregnancy in March of 2020, which was a whole new look at how we take care of pregnant women. Instead of having the usual 10 to 15 minute visit, it was groups of the community, eight people at a time, two hour visits, which were facilitated where there was a bond between the providers and the patients and, you know, and each other. Subsequent to that, my entire department went through undoing racism workshops. And a lot of the people that are on uh, this panel right now were part of it. And a lot of it was funded by the other people that are on this panel. Um, really eye-opening to see the scarring that has occurred in our community and the distrust as a result of things that happened years ago 
you know, we didn't create the house, but we're certainly living in it at this point. So I think dual is what is the next step in the whole process of this tsunami wave, which is really changing the face of prenatal care. I see it as a bridging between the community and the providers. I see it as developing a trust between the providers and the community. And I see it most importantly, a finding common ground, right? We want healthy outcomes. We have been fortunate to be able to take care of this community. I first came here in 1985, rolled up my sleeves and never left. I have had uh, a maternal fetal medicine division for complex pregnancies. That has been 30, 31 years consistent of the same providers of care. And I'm currently hiring physicians that have trained within here that are multiple different nationalities, religion, ethnicity, because people prefer and trust people that have similar backgrounds and similar cultures. So I think the benefit of doulas for our community at this point is unending. In the past, they've been one-offs. Every once in a while, somebody would come in with a doula. And so when you have that kind of one-off process, they're not inclusive and there's no time to find common ground because you're meeting somebody for the first time when they're five, six, seven centimeters dilated, trying to establish a rapport, a trust, and it doesn't work. So this is a well thought out collaboration where both sides can understand what we're trying to achieve. I mean, there is not a, a provider of care in my hospital does not want a perfect outcome for everybody. They want it for the, for the patient and they want it for themselves professionally, right? It, so we are absolutely aligned, but there's some lack of trust. That bridge is necessary. And, you know, we're trying all different ways to get to that bridge. And I think the doulas, once it's a well-formed project, and it's a consistent project and they're part of our space, they're part of our department meetings, they're part of our community on a regular basis. We build trust with them. They have trust with their patients. That gives us by proxy trust by the patients to us. We're all aligned for the same outcome. And it, it, it's disturbing to be an obstetrician in the state of New Jersey and to have such miserable health disparities. So I'm, I'm glad for this opportunity. Um, I wish, you know, it was at the beginning of my career, but I plan on dying before I retire. So I don't plan on leaving, uh, but this is a goal. I mean, we want Patterson to be healthy. We want everybody in Patterson. And if you don't start off with a healthy pregnancy outcome, you are so behind the eight ball in life. So I, I welcome this opportunity for collaboration for bridging, for camaraderie, and for building the trust in the community that uses us as a favorite spot. You should be incredibly happy coming to the hospital, maybe a little bit nervous, a little bit anxious. It is the best day of your life. And to not have an optimal outcome is absolutely devastating to everybody, the kid, the mom, the dad, and also, the healthcare providers that are rendering the care. So we are absolutely all aligned. And I think this may be the magic bullet that gets us in unity with the community. Thank you so much for your commitment, Dr. Kier. So we started a partnership, um, the Centering Pregnancy at St. Joseph um, during the pandemic uh, in the beginning of two, uh, and, uh, 2020. And it's a very successful program. So we trust that we'll be successful with our Dura program at St. Joseph. Ricard, please share with us about the role of the partnership. Absolutely. Well, you said that we trust that we will be successful. We know that we will be successful because we know that we've had a long-standing relationship with, um, with St. Joe's. I'm not sure if anybody knows that 30 years ago, we had a tiny little um, office in, in St. Joe's in Patterson. And our very first, one of our very first programs was a dual program that started in Patterson. So it's nice to come full circle to make this even more robust to get the, um, the community organizations along, to get everyone from labor and delivery and everyone from MCH to be at the table to talk about how they're going to change the landscape for women and children and families 
in, in Patterson. So I'm going to echo what everyone has said, how doulas are just such an important part of, of um, the healthcare team, right? It is the healthcare team. And one thing that Melissa said that really should resonate with everyone is the fact that, you know, doulas are not only advocates, right? They are educators and they educate the public, not only the mother, but the family, um, the, the significant others, how to advocate for themselves. That is very, very important. How to speak up and how to be stronger. Imagine running a race and you have that coach alongside of you every step of the way telling you, yes, take this step, do this, you can do it. And this is what the doulas provide. This is what the doulas provide. We know evidence shows that, you know, with doulas at the bedside, doulas within the healthcare team, we have better outcomes. So when we talk about the commitment of the partnership, our commitment is unfailing. So it's not a matter of hope because we know that hope is not a management strategy. We know that this community of caring, the doula cooperative, will be 100% successful. We, we know that because we are absolutely dedicated. And once we're done here, we're going to definitely move it out to all of Essex, right? So we are very excited to be part of uh, the Doula Collaborative. We wanna make sure that everyone is also just as excited. And you know, you can hear it with the funders. I remember meeting with, with Evan and talking about um, you know, our pilot program. And he's like, yes, 100%. Let me get Melissa, let me get it to you. We're going to do this because as you can see, he knows our commitment, which is unfailing. So, you know, I'm excited to hear about the, the rest of the panel. And I know that our, our time is running short, but with the partnership, we are very excited, 100% committed, unfailing commitment to work with our community partners, to work with St. Joe's and to work with the people of Patterson to ensure that we have positive outcomes and like the first lady said, so we can make sure that people are living full and healthy lives. Thank you, Marie Carr. And I'm so excited. We have uh, over 120 participants on this um, kickoff event. And I want to thank to all our panel members for sharing their commitment and vision for this program, for their support. Um, we are very excited. I think it's a very important collaboration. Um, uh, next, I would like to introduce uh, one of my team members, uh, the Director of uh, Public Health Initiatives, uh, Irina Polanco Ventura, to um, moderate the second panel. Thank you so much, Dol. Irina. Thank you so much, Liliana. Good afternoon, everyone. I am so excited and, and happy to see everyone that's on here and hear from all our panelists. Um, as Liliana mentioned, my name is Irina Polanco Ventura, Director of Public Health Initiatives at the Partnership, and I am honored to be a part of such an important event and such an important program. Most of all, it is my pleasure to moderate the conversation of the second panel, which will be focusing on our new Doula Patterson Cooperative and the experiences of those currently implementing the AMAR Community Doula Project for Spanish-speaking women in Trenton. We hope to hear about the lessons uh, learned from implementing that community doula program within a hospital setting and kind of have this conversation about ways to foster and strengthen collaborative relationships between community doulas and medical providers. I am pleased to be joined by our five extraordinary advocates and change makers. Uh, first, uh, we have Dr. Julie Blumenfeld. She is Certified Nurse Midwife at Capital Health. Hi, Julie. Thanks for joining Hi. us. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, we also have Teresita Carasquillo. Uh, she is the Community-Based Doula Supervisor at Children's Home Society of New Jersey. So she, is, uh, she will tell us more about the AMAR project. Hi, Teresita. Thank you for being here. Um, we also have Deborah Katz, one of our partners. She is a certified nurse midwife and manager for the Centering Pregnancy Program at St. Joseph's Health. Thank you so much, Debbie, for being here. Hello. Hi. Uh, we also have Aurelis Martinez, who is our community doula supervisor at the Partnership uh, for Community of Caring, the Patterson Doula Cooperative. Hi, Aurelis. Hi, everyone. And last but not least, we have Maritza Raimundi Petroski. She is Vice President, Strategic Initiatives of Community Engagement and Prevention Programs at Children's Home Society of New Jersey. Thanks, Maritza, for joining us today. 
So I know we are in a uh, kind of stringent timetable. However, I want to make sure that we are all able to hear from everyone. So I will pose a question uh, to each of our panelists. But of course, you know, feel free to add on um, or piggyback on anyone's um, uh, response um, as you see fit. All right. So we have been hearing about Community of Caring, the Patterson Doula Cooperative. Uh, we heard uh, great information from our funders and our partners, but Aurelis, I'm going to start with you. Uh, you know, tell us a little bit about what Community of Caring is. Tell us, you know, why that name? Uh, what makes this program unique in Patterson? What is a community doula and why they are important in communities such as this one? So tell us a little bit more about, you know, this new project. Perfect. So first I'll start by why this program is unique. I think I want to start there. Um, and I just want to share that what makes this program unique is that the community has been involved from the very beginning. Um, from community partners, as you have heard, and most importantly, community members. Uh, we have established, as you heard, relationships with New Destiny Family Success Center, which is already highly involved in the Patterson community. Uh, and we know Ms. McCone is highly connected with the community. She loves her community. She's all for it. So we're like in perfect hands, I feel like. And then, of course, St. Joseph University Medical Center, and knowing that they're just starting their centering program a year now, two years now, and all of these maternal health services are coming to light, why not uh, have this perfect timing to have this perfect place for birth and individuals in Patterson to receive uh, proper care? And this makes it imperative, of course, uh, to have this relationship with these part with these partners, as we cannot do this work alone. This is a team er effort, of course. Um, a community doula is someone who is from the community. Um, they share lived experiences as the birth and individuals. Uh, same cultures and backgrounds. So we want to make sure that it's someone who's building that relationship. Um, community doulas focus on the emotional and mental health of a birth and individual and their family. And of course, whoever they identify as their support individuals. A community doula provides informational support through pregnancy, physical support through labor and support, labor and birth, and emotional support during postpartum, which is one of the most important period for a birthing individual. A community doula wants to, of course, make sure that the birthing person is fully supported as well as their family so that they can make a more informed decision to have more positive birth outcomes. The reason why we picked the name Community of Caring, this was actually a uh, collect collectively agreed upon by Patterson community members and community partners that we have on here today. Of course, we wanted a name that can represent the diversity in, Pattis in the Patterson community. And seeing that Patterson is filled with so many different cultures and backgrounds, it's important to have a name that feels welcoming, connected to everyone. And we also wanted to include the name Patterson, of course, so that we can feel some type of ownership in the Patterson community. And we know that community doulas are important in the Patterson community as we, uh, after conducting several focus groups around maternal health in the Patterson community, we recognize that many birth and individuals felt they could have had a healthier pregnancy and birth outcome if they had proper support and resources. So what better way to address this matter than to bring community doulas to the Patterson community so that we can address this and bring more positive birth outcomes for our birthing individuals in Patterson. And I know that was a lot. I was trying to cover all of the questions, Irina. <laughs> um, so as we've been stating, uh, we are excited to bring this training uh, to the Patterson community that will allow the individuals in the community to be trained and provide this support and build that relationship and feel more confident to have that relationship with their provider um, and question things when they're a little unsure. Uh, I appreciate that 
the first lady shared her colleague's um, story because that's exactly what we want. Individuals who feel confident enough to say, hey, I may need a little more time before I make a decision, or can you elaborate a little more on what it is that you're telling me that you want to do um, so that we can have better birth outcomes? And I hope I covered everything I know. Thank you so much, Aurelis. I think you covered it perfectly. Um, I want to add um, to, to the information that you shared that the partnership has a webpage where you could learn more. So if you visit pmch.org backslash doula, um, you'll be able to connect with Aurelis and learn more about the um, information um, regarding this new Patterson Doula Cooperative. So thank you again, Aurelis, for sharing all that info. Um, Maritza, I am going to ask you about your experience with um, the project that you and your team are leading. So you have been able to implement the Amar Community Doula Project serving Hispanic families in Trenton. Tell us a little bit about that project and what you feel um, have been your strengths and keys to success so far. So thank you, Irina, for the invitation. And first, I want to congratulate the partnership for this amazing milestone. I can't believe we're here today. I have seen this project blossom from the strength and the desire and the expertise already in, the, in place in Patterson and the surrounding community and the commitment of the stakeholders along this process starting with the field scan that took place, the learning conversations uh, with community members, uh, all of that have truly informed, and I can say that firsthand, every decision that the partnership has made along the way. And that's just remarkable because trust in the community is what we're really looking for when we're building these type of programs and services. And here we are at the kickoff of the Patterson Doula Collaborative. I feel like I have a personal invitation to either a gender reveal or a special baby shower uh, in celebration of maternal child health. Uh, what a great way to begin this week. Um, and I'm sure that this program will help the state in its mission to reduce health disparities in our communities. And we just we just celebrate you today for sure. Um, I would say the Children's Home Society of New Jersey is similar uh, to the partnership, which has a continuum of maternal child health services and programs across multiple counties that can be a strong foundation for the doula program. And I think that has been a key success for us, being able to leverage resources and build upon programs and services where we have truly earned our trust in the community uh, and that has made it that has made a difference um, and as you have heard also um, our program uh, which really means Amar right stands for Apoyando Madres Armando Redes in Spanish um, helping mothers creating networks in English was also selected by the Hispanic community and the women in our community um, which again allows for that that feedback and that direct interaction. Um, and the word also means love, which is we want that to be the foundation and the premise for the work that we do. Um, and, and we follow the Health Connect One model uh, and the strength that that particular component brings. But in terms of our strength, if I can kind of package that, I would say there are key successes throughout the initial planning and implementation of our MART community-based doula program is our deep roots uh, and commitment to the Hispanic and Black communities in Trenton and providing maternal child health services for over 20 years. Uh, providing bilingual evidence informed prenatal health education for over 20 years. Uh, and we have been able to build that trust in the community. Uh, but that would not be possible if we did not have passionate doulas that really believe in the work. And uh, I consider myself fortunate to have Teresita uh, with us since the very beginning and Julie uh, and Teresita serving as a supervisor and also our, our selfless doulas that really, they're, they're our angels 24 seven in the middle of the night doing everything that's needed. Uh, yesterday, one was celebrating a birthday and she was also helping with a birthing person. And that just tells you the commitment and the dedication and just their accessibility for them uh, is just so important. And that has been key to our success, identifying the right individuals to move our mission and our, and our objectives and our aspirations to improve birth outcomes to the next level. And that would not be possible in the middle of this pandemic if we did not have a strong foundation with the women and the trust in the community. Um, 
there are other elements, of course, that are important for our success. Um, having support in the hospital, and you will hear from our passionate and dedicated clinician, Julie, who's been with us for 20 years or, or more along the way supporting our program. So having that champion, that ambassador within our medical providers that really understands and can influence their medical, medical colleagues uh, and infuse that passion to see culturally relevant doula work flourish for, for her patients, but also for the great, greater of the community. So having the representation in St. Joe's and the other members and the stakeholders in Patterson is just, is just key to the success. Um, and some of the speakers before me have talked or alluded a little bit about public policy education and that it's another key factor, right? We, we have also tried to um, elevate or raise the work of Hispanic community doulas and the needs and the strengths of the moms that, that we serve by inserting our, ourselves in conversations that allow us to advocate for the women that we serve, that allows us to support um, the, the state of New Jersey in public policy environments, that uh, opportunities to speak, for example, at assembly committees about the benefits of women of colors um, and community prenatal health education, community doula services, being able to share our experiences all along the way. It's been a dual effort. Implementing a program during the pandemic, providing the right support and training for the team, building uh, systems that support our infrastructure, and at the same time, not forgetting how important it is to communicate those successes, lessons learned along the way, and being able to support the partnership as you have been developing this and providing technical assistant, assistance is also uh, rewarding for us as a team uh, at Children's Home Society of New Jersey. Um, other key elements uh, of the public uh, environment, public policy environment, is that you know we we have been the only Spanish evidence-based doula program to work with New Jersey Medicaid and New Jersey Department of Health on planning community doula benefits. And so we have been able to share our lived experiences, what's worked, what, and advocate all along. And we thank the, the state of New Jersey for allowing us and the organization to be a part and to, to share what we have learned throughout the years that we've been working with the, with the program AMAR. Um, and, and I will also say that, um, Another key factor is having um, community members, whether they're in the medical field or, or working with maternal child health services or not, but having those pillars in the community who believe that this is more than just issues of, of birthing issues, right? This is issues of justice, about inclusion, about equity, and that it impacts everyone in the community, that the work that we're doing is not a siloed work, that we are working for the greater good of the communities in which we are serving. And to be able that we, be able to say now that we have a sister agency in Northern New Jersey, our cousins, if you will, right, that are actually uh, implementing this community project just it it's just brings a lot of hope uh, for me as a as an administrator to know that you can cross uh, collaborate that you can bring resources to the community that you can share lessons learned and I'm just delighted to have been part of this process and having the opportunity to support everyone that's made this possible and I just want to let Teresita and Julie talk more about what the work really means on a day-to-day -day basis and what they've been able to accomplish collectively with the support of their own communities. So thank you very much. Thank you, Maritza, for sharing all those important points. Uh, the technical assistance, um, the holding of the hands that you have done with us has been invaluable. So um, I personally, and on behalf of the team, thank you. Um, from your conversation, one of, you know, a few things that I heard was trust in the community, you know, passionate doulas and champions, whether that's in the hospital setting or community setting. Um, and so thank you for that. And, and I think, you know, those are ingredients that we have for this program. And, and speaking about passionate doulas, um, Teresita, um, I have a question uh, for you. Um, you know, as Maritza was saying, you have been leading the MR project, uh, community doula project since the beginning and have seen it through this pandemic. Um, tell us about your successes um, and share a bit about how you were able to engage both um, individuals from the community to motivate them to become doulas and how you were able to share that information to the birthing um, parents in your community. Thank you, Irina. 
Uh, in Amar, we began providing services in October 2019. And up to this moment, we have supported 93 families and we have welcomed 87 doula babies. We have worked very hard for our birthing families to achieve positive outcomes. Increasing our breastfeeding rates was one of our principal goals. I can share that 60% of our clients exclusively breastfeed at six weeks, 58% of them exclusively breastfeed at three, three months. Our low risk cesarean rate is 8.3%. Uh, that is great for us, but for me, one our most important success is the level of satisfaction of our clients. They are very happy with our services. They feel supported and having us by their side has helped them achieve a more positive birth outcome and birth experience. We know that because they don't wanna be discharged from the program. They wanna stay forever with us. Uh, they want their sisters, their family members, their friends to have an Amar doula. And this is the best reward we can have for our job. In Amar, we replicate the model of Health Connect One for community-based doulas. One of the most important parts of the program is to find the perfect candidate for the training. To be successful in that, we need to connect with trusted members of the community we will serve, talk to them about the training and engage them into participating. We wanted to find people that understand our community, people who have the passion to serve, people who really care about our people. We did orientation sessions where we talked to them about the job of a doula, shared with them the wonderful things they will experience while doing this job. But also we were clear about the difficulties and expectations of the job because being a community-based doula is hard work. And it is important that our potential trainees know that since day one. To share information about the project with the birthing families of the community, it's important to use members of the community so your potential clients can feel identified and represented. We prepare flyers about our services and place them in different places where our families usually go. We use social media, of course. We offer childbirth classes to the community, demonstrate comfort measures to them so they know how a doula can help them during labor and birth but we explained them that the support of a doula is much more than that. We provide extensive support since pregnancy and throughout the postpartum period. We ask them, tell us about your needs and let them know how we can help them. I've learned so many things during these two years of Amar and I would love to share some of them with you. Value the work of your doulas with a first salary. Support your doulas, protect them, pay attention to their needs and insights. This program should be based on collaboration and teamwork. Take in consideration the experiences of the family you will serve, what they need, what they want, what type of support they feel comfortable with. Always, always take in consideration their opinion. Put your heart and soul on this project. You will make a difference in the lives of the families you will serve. Good luck. <laughs> Maritza, I can see why this project is so successful. Having Teresita lead the path is, is quite amazing. And hearing her not only talk about this project, but really thinking up deeply about uh, meeting the needs of the doulas is, is incredible. So thank you for, for sharing that, Teresita. We appreciate it. Okay, so Julie. Um, you know, we're going to go now into the hospital setting. Um, you know, you have also been a key member of the Amar project, especially when it comes to ensuring that hospitals are a welcoming place uh, for community doulas. So tell us about your experience with implementing a doula project at your hospital and what strategies work to ensure that doulas would be seen as an essential part of the perinatal care team and how can we foster that collaborative relationship between clinicians and doulas? 
So first, I just want to thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today to share my experiences um, with the MR program and with Capital Health working as a midwife, um, helping to integrate doulas into the healthcare system there, which really has just been a pleasure. I tell Ritz and Teresita all the time because I'm still really integrally involved with the program. I meet with the doulas every month to go over cases with them and talk about changes and things that might improve their practice. And I every time tell Maritza, this is my favorite hour of the month. And it truly is. I enjoy working with them so tremendously and just see the impact they've made with our patients and with our providers who really they know them by name. They look forward to their presence in the hospital. They're so glad to have them there. They're a huge, huge asset to our service. Um, and I'm so happy for the birthing people of Patterson and the partnership and Debbie and Dr. Kears that they're going to have this same kind of opportunity. So my heart goes out to them and I, I just think it's, a, a, it's fabulous. Um, we are really fortunate, Capital Health, as Maritza um, spoke directly to, that we've had this ongoing relationship with the Children's Home Society of New Jersey to engage in another project with them. And it sounds like really the same kind of relationship with the partnership at St. Joe's to engage in another partnership with them um, really was very smooth because it was a known entity. There was a lot of trust established. The programs have been very, very successful. Um, so because of this ongoing relationship, um, it was really just an extension of that existing work. And quite frankly, you know, we know that the maternity care system in the United States really overall lacks investment in these really simple, seeming, seemingly simple, innovative strategies that actually better outcomes. And the interventions that have already been put in place, both at Capitol and St. Joe's, like Centering for Pregnancy and doulas really will improve outcomes. Um, and I, and you know, I can give some really concrete examples of things we see that you know that really make a difference. Um, pregnant people that are accompanied by doulas to prenatal visits are really encouraged to ask questions when they otherwise might feel um, uncomfortable doing so or not really have that voice to do it. Birthing people who might otherwise be alone in labor and now have a familiar nurturing person by their side, someone from their community, someone who really understands um, their perspective people who are actively engaged in breastfeeding and supported in the postpartum period for an ex really extended period of time. And in terms of um, strategies to ensure that the doulas are seen as an essential part of the perinatal team, I think at St. Joe's this is really well underway, but discussions at all levels with all people who are involved. So that means, you know, from nursing administration to the, you know, the lead people and decision makers in the hospitals to the clinicians directly giving care, the nurses on the unit and explaining to them that this is an evidence-based strategy. This is something that's been supported in the literature for some time now. This is not a, a novel idea in 2022 that we're just discovering and that there's lots of evidence that support the positive impact of doulas, um, both on the patient experience, so people providing compassionate care, education and explanations, and all of this from a shared perspective, because these are community doulas from the same community where these patients are coming from. And also clinical outcomes like cesarean section rates and increased breastfeeding rates. So there's really concrete evidence that shows that clinical outcomes are improved by the presence of doulas as well. As well. So this discussion in the hospital at multiple levels, um, including an explicit policy um, about doulas that isn't um, sort of policing what they do, but supporting um, who they are. So the doulas are permitted to perform the services that they're trained to provide, just like any other provider who is present in the hospital and doing the work that they've been trained to do. Um, and on a really practical level, um, engaging them. So things that we've done that have worked really well or, you know, having them, um, you know, before COVID, having them for lunch, but hopefully in the um, near future, we'll be seeing things like that happening again. So having them to the outpatient offices for lunch, for opportunities to engage with the providers on an informal level where they're not necessarily engaged only in a clinical setting with them, but an informal way, sharing information, sharing strategies, um, sharing their perspectives, who they are and really what they do from both sides. Um, to have opportunities to have clinicians and nurses learn about the program um, and really integrate the doulas into the team um, at, in that way. Um, and then embracing the idea that doulas are really there to contribute to the efforts to continue to improve maternal health outcomes, that we're all together as a team working towards a common goal. Thank you so much, Julie. I think, you know, everything you said is, is key. Um, and that's something that, um, you know, and Zebra's on this panel um, that we will be working, um, 
you know, soon um, about how to go about implementing a doula policy working together, including um, the community. It's not only our partners, but also community members, um, the doulas. Um, that are working in, in Patterson, you know, need to be included to ensure that everyone feels comfortable and welcomed to, to the facility. Um, and that, you know, clinicians themselves are educated and feel supported. Um, and that, you know, we're working uh, collaboratively as an interdisciplinary team, for sure. So thank you for sharing that. So Debbie, last but not least, um, you know, as a project partner, uh, we heard earlier from Mr. S uh, Slavin and Dr. Kears about the hospital's commitment to this project and from Julie about her experience. You know, we just heard from Julie about her experience with the hospital setting. So from your perspective, how do you feel um, community of caring will be vital to individuals giving birth at your hospital? You know, what are the unique challenges that um, Patterson presents, um, you know, when it comes to trying to decrease barriers uh, for um, mothers um, and, and how they, and their satisfaction when it comes to their birth experience. So thank you. Um, so midwives have a long policy working with doulas, um, but in my past, it really has been people with money that had the money to, to pay the doula salaries, but now that doulas are paid by Medicaid, um, it opens up a whole new world and people that couldn't have this opportunity before now have it. So we're all so thankful that that has been worked out before we got involved. So, you know, we'll be able to, like um, Teresita said, pay them a fair salary to do the work that they, they do. Um, you know, maternity care, you know, our nurses, our, our midwives, our physicians, you know, it's not only that patient that we have. We're dealing with a whole floor of people and this way they have that one special person with them. And I really think that is gonna help um, to tie everything together, especially as we become familiar with these people and, and we, we have these learned and shared experiences. As far as um, you know, the disparities, I really think that having this opportunity um, education is something that helps. We've seen that through our centering program. Our C-section rate among our centering patients is so much lower than the C-section rate um, in the general population. And I really think a lot of that has to do with education, with knowledge, with empowering the women to ask questions, empowering the women to advocate for themselves. And now to have more advocates is only going to be beneficial. So, you know, and it's, we're going to be expanding it. It's not just going to be a Spanish language population. The city of Patterson is a huge diversity. Um, you know, women who identify as Black, women from Bangladesh, Arabic countries, um, and Latinas from more countries than I can name. So having people based in their own culture, based in, in their own norms is gonna be really helpful in order to further empower these women. And we're planning on introducing the doulas to the centering program. That way we'll get those connections um, right away. And then hopefully some of our centering moms will find such joy in this that they might want to go on and become doulas. Thank you. Um, that was actually going to be my next question on how community of caring aligns with your centering pregnancy program and how both programs will work together. So, you know, thank you for, for sharing information, you know, about that. So I think we have reached, you know, the end of our panel discussion. Thank you for closing us out, Debbie. Thank you again to all our panel members for such a rich conversation. And I'd like to give again, a special thanks to Julie, Maritza, Teresita, and the rest of the Children's Home Society of New Jersey team, Sarah and Tara, I know you're on here. Thank you for all their support and guidance uh, through the beginning uh, process. Arellis, thank you 
for working along with me. And Deborah, thank you for your time and sharing your experience and expertise. Julie, thank you so much um, for, for being such a, a wonderful consultant to us. And you will be hearing from us a lot in the next few months, I'm sure. Um, so thank you. Next, I would like to introduce my colleague, Marie Kinsella, who is the Director of Co uh, Community Programs at the Partnership. She will be facilitating the third panel for this event. I'll pass that on to you, Marie. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Irina. Um, it's my pleasure and my honor to really introduce this next panel. This panel is of the community, you know, and you're gonna hear from um, them, the things that are happening in the community because they're on the ground. And uh, I've had the pleasure of uh, being in discussion with a lot of them and really hearing some of the challenges, some of the concerns, but also some of the sparkles in the lives of the folks that they work with. So I will start the introductions now. So we have Amber Hug, who is a facilitator. She is from the Bangladeshi American Women's Development Initiative. Hi, good evening. Okay. So okay. We have Rana Mustafa. She's the executive director of the Palestinian American Community Center. We have Kashika Phillips, a community health worker from New Destiny. Hi, everyone. We have L Rebecca Lance Paras from, she is the Maternal Child Health Program Development Coordinator and Trainer for Health Connect One. And we also have Vanessa Velez. She's a strategic communications manager at New Destiny Family Success Center. So ladies, welcome. Um, I'm just gonna jump right into the questions. Um, and so my first question is because you've been so connected to the communities, in what ways can community residents in Patterson support this project? So whoever wants to jump in, please feel free, Amber. Thank you, Maria. First of all, I'm so excited to see this day come and, you know, uh, it, it is such an energy. So back to your question that, you know, uh, obviously as women, we have been waiting for this day and um, uh, Patterson is full of diverse community, you know, Bangladeshi community, Arabs, Hispanic. As community leaders, we can uh, become part of different institutions, you know, religious organizations, uh, and women are the core of the, you know, any household uh, where um, we are the nurturers. And when it comes to the childbirth, that is the most, uh, you know, vulnerable time. And doula makes that gap. Uh, where you are in pain and you cannot express, but because that person is with you, even more better than your own mother, your best friend, because that person is with you for that time. And why I'm saying that as community, because back home we had, uh, you know, aunts and that community, which has always been helping, not just the childbirth of, you know, that uh, time period. Afterwards, doula is there to support you, to help you out. And that emotional ups and downs that we go through as postpartum depression and, you know, you know, baby blue depression, but that person is right there, non-judgmental, helping us. So I think it's a privilege for all of us as a community member, and we better do this, you know, to the best of our ability. We have to, there's no way of saying no. So, uh, you know, in the mosques, in, in, in churches, in um, all the religious areas, or, uh, you know, uh, different community, political areas, school backgrounds, PTA meetings, you name it, wherever the mother and woman is there, we need to make sure that this opportunity is not missed at any cost because what is it doing? It is becoming the disparity of C-section. C-section might sound like, oh, it's the right thing to do at that time, but no, it's not. The nature has been created in a way that going through the natural pregnancy and many times because you know I, it has gone through my own experiences. You, even if you are, you know, diluted, but you don't have the right person with you supporting that because you're tired and you're not getting that emotional support, you go through the wrong experiences. So this is, I think, is the biggest ally for, you know, that the nurturing piece with medical um, institution is missing. Doulas are going to bring that nurturing piece in that. 
Thank you for that, Amber. So Kashika, I'm going to ask you the same question. How are you going to get community residents in Patterson? Because I know that you really are very entrenched in the lives of many folks in Patterson. Well, I would definitely start by information. Um, I feel like a lot of people out there are not really <clears throat> understanding of the definition of what a doula really is and how they can really impact our community, right? So I will definitely start there. And then also a big part is to really say that it can be an opportunity to change your career, right? So at the same time, um, while you're helping the community, this can actually be beneficial long-term for them. Um, and I don't know if they really understand that, you know, that, that they can change their career and they can um, change the community at the same exact time. So why not be, you know, influential in that kind of way? Thank you so much, Kashika. Raina, I'm going to ask you the same question. Thank you very much for having um, me part of this panel. And this initiative is really a very, very important one and very close to my heart. Um, I have two kids and my second one, I actually insisted on having a doula present throughout the entire process. And I saw night and day experience. You know, I think with my first, there was a lot of fear um, and there was a lot of unknown. While with the second, it was very different. There was a lot of support um, I felt advocated for. And that's really, I think, the biggest message that I'd want to get across to any of our community members is that this idea that it, it does, in fact, take a village from day one. So you don't have to wait until the baby comes out and, you know, and a lot of times in the way that the healthcare system works, the, the focus is the baby no matter what. So even when you're pregnant, the focus is the baby. Um, and being someone who firsthand experienced the benefit of having a doula and seeing how through a doula, you're able to prioritize your needs, your help, and get what you need. Because in the end of the day, if the mom's happy, the baby's happy, and then in long term, the society will be happy as well. So that's a huge um, focus for me on a personal level and on a community level. I really want to get that message across that this, this is a very important program um, that you do not have to do it alone. Um, and as Amber had said, a lot of the women that are part of our community um, come from immigrant backgrounds and this was never done or expected to be something done alone. Um, so I think it's just going back to really those roots and that idea of knowing that you do have a community of care around you to make sure that you have the most successful pregnancy that will lead to the healthiest baby. Thank you so much, Raina. I can just feel the excitement from all of you as even though I'm on a screen, I can feel your excitement. Now I'm gonna ask Vanessa because she just had a, a birthing experience. So she's a new mommy and Vanessa, really, I wanna thank you for being part of our panel. But I'd like to ask you the same question. You know, um, you know in what ways can uh, we get the uh, Patterson community to support the project? Good morning or afternoon, everyone. Yes, I um, just gave birth. He's two weeks old. He's over there sleeping. Um, but I feel just like Kiki mentioned, being part of the community and being able to share resources and word of mouth, right? Some people don't know some of the resources that exist. And through programs like this and through community partnerships, they'll learn more about the programs that we offer, but also the importance of having a doula. So I myself am a doula. I went through a program from my own personal experiences. And when I was going through my birth experience, I used the doula for myself. Although I have some knowledge and did parenting classes, having that support was so important. Like it, as they say, it takes a tribe. And my family's out of state, right? So I really didn't have family here. My mom was in Puerto Rico. She couldn't even make it to the birth, but I had my partner there and I had a doula there. So my doula was there holding my hand, squeezing my hand, saying, you can do this, you got this, you know, and having that support was very important to me. And even on this Sunday, she's going to come over, my doula is going to come over and she's going to help me maybe, you know, let me shower or make something while I'm, you know, here with the baby. But having that support is something that a lot of people never experience. And now that a lot of health insurances cover these services, they're able to afford a doula and see the importance of it. So a lot of word of mouth, a lot of personal experience and, you know, sharing the importance of a doula, you know, they're really there to, you know, support you and get you through one of the most beautiful times you can experience. Thank you so much. 
Thank I'm going to get back to you all in a few minutes, but right now I'd like to ask Rebecca um, about Health Connect One's vision and uh, what makes that training uh, model, what makes your training model unique and a good fit for our community? Yes, so Health Connect One's vision is to collaborate with Black, Brown, and Indigenous communities. Um, we want to ensure that we are providing support um, in birth equity through safe and healthy pregnancies and births, um, thriving babies and families, and a successful early parenting experience. Our community-based doula model um, utilizes unique framework, which encompasses five essential components, which some people on the panel have like touched on in their experience and their work with Health Connect One. Um, we want to make sure that we're employing trusted members of the community. We want to collaborate with community stakeholders and use a diverse team approach. Uh, we extend support from early pregnancy through the first months of postpartum. Um, through our training, we facilitate an experiential learning popular um, education model. And then finally, we want to ensure that we're valuing our community-based doulas work with a salary, um, as well as uh, supervision and support. That's very important to make sure that our community-based doulas feel valued in um, gaining a salary and having uh, the sites develop a supervision and support system for them. This is a model that we know will work for Patterson because it centers community. We've all been talking about the community's needs. Uh, we want to make sure that Patterson um, community leaders are in touch with their own strengths, their skills, the resources that are available here. Uh, we don't come in and just train you to be doulas, right? We want to make sure that we're providing capacity building, um, skill strengthening, um, and then also ongoing technical assistance to the community leaders that are in Patterson um, in order to develop the framework to implement the program based on what Patterson's strengths and needs are. And this is something that we've been very successful in over like 50 communities in 25 states. And we know that this works because we've been doing this since 1986. So we're definitely proud of our model. Um, and we're excited that this is happening in Patterson. And you know, we'll be definitely successful here because you have amazing leaders and amazing partnerships. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca. You know, um, as this project started to develop and now has come to what I consider fruition, I'm so delighted. I mean, it has been something that I've wanted to see happen um, for a very long time. And just hearing the other two panels, and then certainly this panel who is so connected to the community, it really lifts my heart. So, you know, I do want to ask, I know that we're getting close to time, but I wanna hear a little from each of you um, what do you expect to see with this project in Patterson? You know, what would be, what, what are your hopes and your, your um, just the, the things that you would like to come out of this, this particular project? Kashika, can I start with you? Yes, um, I would like to see a lot of success stories. As a community health worker, I am constantly hearing about um, you know, their pregnancy, their labor, what it's like when they go home with the baby, all the different questions that they had that I really struggled to answer. And I'm hoping that this program will definitely change the direction of that. I hope that, our, you know, there's an increase in success stories um, and that they, you know, everything is beautiful because honestly, to be pregnant should be a very beautiful journey. And a lot of times I'm hearing very traumatic experiences. So I'm hoping that when they get a doula and they have someone that's there, that's their companion, and that is making sure they are okay mentally, physically, emotionally, um, that their outcome has changed drastically. So that's what I'm really hoping for in the long term, in the long run. Amber? So what I'm hoping from here is the, the point of view of community changing, of women, of, you know, elderly women, grandma and in-laws that, you know, pregnancy is such a, you know, just with the expression that, you know, I'm going for childbirth, it's like, eh! and then a doula is with me, it's like, ah, oh, it's different, you know, it's a support and, and, and just a simple understanding and trust in the community that there is someone with me who is going to be with me, 
you know, because we do have family members, but things happen ev to everyone, you know, and somebody can show up and somebody cannot, but this is somebody who you can trust and, and you know that this person is not, is going to be non-judgmental. So for the community, I really would love, and, and the other thing is that, you know, that trust and that, you know, uh, the mental wellness, the self-care that the whole world is talking about through pandemic. This is real self-care. As women, we bring birth in this world. And this is, and we are nurturer. This is the most important time. Giving birth is between life and death. Things can go wrong. But when you are mentally relaxed and you know somebody is with me, yeah, many women do want, oh, I want my partner, my husband to be with me, but maybe it's difficult for him to go through childbirth and things like that and that anger. But having that one person who is going to be with me and that's a woman and she's emotional and she's going to be understanding and throughout the community this thing has to work because when people and other uh, adults uh, uh, you know adult uh, members would see that yes this is something which is going to be successful for communities to say one day that you know oh she my this person is pregnant or oh, you need to get a doula this is what I'm really hoping that this is gonna happen in the community. Anybody who knows that no matter what age somebody is pregnant, they're gonna say, before you go to the doctor, yeah, once you confirm with pregnancy, you need to get a doula. It's, and when we were having our meetings, we uh, internally, we were talking about a name in a language which can, you know, be Urdu, Hindi, Punjabi, say one word, which is called Sati means, you know, companion, which is gonna be with you. So that's what I'm hoping from, and I'm very, very, you know, positive about it. Okay, thank you, Raina. Oh, I definitely echo everything that was said before. Um, I think if I were to summarize it, three things: so happier and healthier moms, and happy and healthier babies. Um, second is more representation. So actually having doulas that are from the backgrounds of the pregnant women um, and mothers. Um, and lastly, just having people actually, you know, um, know what a doula is, want to have a doula and not and have it more of a societal norm than a societal exception, or you know, variant something different. Um, that's those are really the three things I hope for. And Vanessa? I would also like to piggyback on everything everyone else said about, you know, like having positive birth stories. A lot of women go into um, giving birth and have fear, right? There's, they have all these fears and reservations about having a baby, but having that support system, not just your partner, because your partner might not know how to massage you the way a doula might massage you. They might not even know how to check up on you because everyone focuses on the baby, but your doula will check in on you and say, did you eat today? Or what did you eat today? Or how can I help you? Do you need me to do laundry for you or wash your dishes or you know, support you in that way after you give birth. It doesn't just end, well, I gave birth, I no longer have a doula, but doulas are there to support you postpartum and bereavement in all phases of your life. And even when you're done contracting them and having these services, it becomes like a friendship where they'll still check in on you and you check in on them as well. So I feel like the community definitely needs that with all the stories we hear about people not having positive birth stories and, you know, having bad experiences. You know, women gave birth naturally so long ago, you know, and to reduce cesarean rates, to be able to have healthier births, I think would be great for our community. And then having people who look like them or who have experienced things they experience would be great for our community. Thank you. Thank you all so much. And you are the trusted members of the community. And I've been so pleased, delighted, and honored to facilitate this particular panel. Um, again, um, thank you. And this is just the beginning. We have other work to do, and I look forward to seeing you uh, moving forward. Um, and now we're at the end of our panelist, and I, our, I think we're going to bring on our, yes, our president and CEO of the, uh, the Partnership for Maternal and Child Health of Northern New Jersey, Marie Call. Again, guys, thank you so much. Yeah, now we're muted. Thank you so much. I know everyone is just as excited as I am. So you know what? Use your fingers, go to the chat, put in applause, because I know that we're so excited. We are innovated. 
We are um, ready to start the journey. But you know what? Before we start the journey, it's time for action. What are we going to do? I really need you guys, in order for us to start changing the paradigm, to have everything that our doula um, birth workers just talked about, um, making sure that doulas are top of mind, commonplace, that we change the outcomes, that we have people that look like us when they come into the room, that you have a sense of calm. In order for us to do that, we need to spread the word. So I need you to go out there and talk about the unwavering commitment that you heard about today. Talk about the excitement, the dedication, the funders, what um, New Destiny is doing, how, can, um, how um, they are helping to change the paradigm at St. Joe's and bringing doulas into the fold. Talk about that. Talk about our logo. Did everybody see the logo? You see how the woman holding the baby is an eight, which is an infinity loop. You see how the C is cocooning the woman. So that, that looks like the doula cocooning the family, making sure that there is a thread of trust and the sustainability to ensure that the community changes the landscape, that the outcomes are decreased and increased in such a way that we can live our full and happy and best lives. So spread the word, go to www.pmch forward slash doula, or look right there in our chat. You'll see our flyers um, and you can get some more information. This is a free, underline, free education, free service. So if you have friends that have talk, been talking about, mm, I think I want to be there to help someone through labor, to educate them, to be a postpartum doula. I can't do labor and delivery, but I could do postpartum doula. Tell them to come to us, www.pmch forward slash doula to learn about this very exciting and free training that will help us change the paradigm in Patterson. And then after we're done with Patterson, we will move throughout Northern New Jersey. So I want to take a minute and just thank our esteemed panelists. Thank you so much for spending some time with us, giving us some valuable information, our generous funders, seeing what we can do and how we can change the paradigm, having faith in us and having the unwavering commitment to change what is happening in, Par um, in Patterson. And for all of our special guests, specifically our mayor, Mayor Saya, and the first lady, Tammy Murphy, which was pegged the hardest um, working first lady so that is definitely true. She's helping us change the paradigm and ensuring that New Jersey is the safest place, not only to have a baby, but to raise a family. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I look forward to getting all of the applications because I know there's going to be so many interested people to ensure that our doula program is successful and that we are changing the paradigm for the women, children, and families in Patterson. Thank you so much and see you soon. Bye-bye.